Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Pitch Side Podcast. I'm your host, the HOD from the PSP, and um, welcome back to the newest episode of the Pitch Side Podcast, where we're going to preview, of course, the biggest action from the Champions League on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, before that, of course, like, share, subscribe to the channel, of course, enable notifications to receive more episodes of the podcast. You can listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. Or you can head to our social media, at SalPSP, on Twitter, at PitchSidePod, on Instagram, and join us, of course, for more um, <coughs> episodes of this podcast. Um, it's Tuesday, that means Champions League is back, that means we have a lot to talk about in terms of the Champions League. Oh boy, are there some big points in Tuesday and Wednesday's fixture. Let's start from Tuesday, of course. And despite the fact that there's a Barcelona-Juventus game that is branded as the last time maybe that we're going to see Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo in the same pitch, um, facing each other, of course, um, the big game isn't Barcelona-Juventus, because that game, really, you're looking at the lay of the group, is, is really decided already. Barcelona 15 points, Juventus 12 points. I mean... Yes, it is a big matter, talking about who's going to be the top of the group, but certainly uh, it's going to be not as big uh, as the the other big game on Tuesday, uh, which is going to be taking place in Leipzig between RB Leipzig and Manchester United. For Manchester United, it's all about avoiding defeat, and they go through, and result, aside from defeat, would do them the the wonders, um, really do them the world of wonders, against RB Leipzig, who come into this game knowing that their only option, really, is to win. They don't have the luxury of, you know, goal difference, or the luxury of head-to-head competition over anyone, because um, they lost to PSG away from home 1-0, they lost to Man United 5-0, and and it looks like they're going to be needing something very, very special um, if they're going to pull that off. Um, uh, RB Leipzig coming from, I think, a disappointing draw against Bayern Munich, coming off the back as well of a hard victory over uh, Istanbul Bishakshi here in the uh, Champions League last week. They know that their problem is defensive, more than offensive, although... Although still they have problems going forward, really lacking some pace up front, really, after the exit of Timo Werner. They know that their battle with Manchester United is in the midfield. They know that the midfield is the key area in football. That sounds like a stereotype, sounds like a cliche almost to say. Sometimes that football's key battle is in the midfield. But in this game, I think it sounds clear that it will be in the midfield for RB Leipzig. And Manchester United certainly they want to close down Bruno Fernandes because they know that in the back they will have big, 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 big problems with Deutsch of Amakano, their biggest defender, um, missing the game due to suspension, of course. They know they will face problems against the likes of Rashford, Greenwood, um, you know, Martial, again, for all the, the criticism that he receives, he became a social media troll, by the way. He joined probably the likes of, you know, Karim Benzema and then Olivier Giroud and and Raheem Sterling probably in the pantheon of the great attackers who miss easy chances. Um, Although, to be fair, I should shut up when I mention Giroud, really, because he's really on form at the moment. Um, Again, for Leipzig, it is a midfield battle. They close down Bruno Fernandes, they're fine. If they don't, it's going to be a bad day for them at the office, because they don't have, you know, the, the best the paciest of fullbacks, and although they have one heck of a fullback in Angelino, but he's not the paciest really, he's not the quickest. Um, if they put Trashford from his side, if they put Greenwood from his side, that's too much pace, I think, for him. Uh, but again, I think the work rate in the midfield of um, of, uh, of Leipzig, depending on who's going to be playing in that midfield of Leipzig, of course, if it's going to be the same as... Last time out, it will be uh, Amado Haidara, it will be uh, Emil Forsberg, and it will be Sabitzer, actually, um, and um, and um, Forsberg. Uh, if that is the midfield three for, um, for, for Leipzig, that is going to provide a good work rate, really. That's going to provide a good, solid basis of, of, of work rate, really, that, can, that Leipzig can, you know... 
um, start within the midfield, knowing that United do not have the same work rate. The fact that they lack a proper sort of um, CDM, a defensive midfielder, that can, you know, destroy the, 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 the play, that can break the play. Uh, they don't have that luxury Manchester United at the moment. Obviously, they're still looking for one. With the whole Pogba situation, maybe they'll get him out and bring in a proper defensive midfielder, but still. Um, RB Leipzig's biggest strength, I think, is in its midfield, as much as the attack lacks the pace, um, which which shows in their you know, stats this season. They only scored um, 19 goals this season. They only scored 19 goals this season, which is very, very... Um, 21 goals, sorry. Um, it, it is roughly... You know, um, it, it it is roughly better than what you expect from Leipzig side. A Leipzig side that, with Timo Werner, scored those on his own pretty much. He scored twenty three goals, I think, last season in the Bundesliga. So for Leipzig, it's all about the midfield. It's all about who they're going to be playing in the midfield. Uh, uh, I correct myself, of course. I stand corrected. Um, it was Tyler Adams. Sabitzer and Amado Haidara who started against Man United, um, Bayern Munich. If they do start against Man United with the same formation, I would say they would have a big advantage over uh, over Manchester United. Marcel Sabitzer, he he works his his backside off in that midfield, trying to intercept the balls, trying to set up players up front, trying to really give um, you know the uh, he's not he he was more offensive. Um, prior to uh, this season, probably, but you know, as as time went on, uh, and as of course the absentees and the injuries, the exits of you know Diego Demi, the injury for um, for for Campbell, the injury for Conor Lima, it deprived um, RB Leipzig from having a proper centre midfielder, so that forced Sabitzer to return. Um, you know, to, you know, drag back a little bit onto the pitch and, and change his positioning a little bit. But he's doing good at it, to be fair. I'm not going to be lying. He's doing really, really good at central midfielder. For Manchester United, <clears throat> for Manchester United, it's all about being successful, isn't it? It's all about being effective. Um, their last game against West Ham wasn't impressive. Um, they were down at halftime, uh, 1-0. It didn't look good in the first half in particular without Rashford and Fernandes, in, pati- uh, in particular Bruno Fernandes, he didn't look good. And if they're going to be needing something like that every time, it's not going to be a good season. It's not just about this Leipzig game, this, despite how decisive and how clinical, how important this game. This is not the only game of the season, they still have a long season to go, and if they don't find solutions elsewhere... It's going to be some such a rough, rough season when Bruno Fernandes is, is is injured or doesn't have the best performance of his life, or Marcus Rashford does the same. So for Man United, it's all about being effective. It's all about trying to get the best out of this game because you know Julian Nagelsmann and RB Leipzig are going to be the side on the front foot. There's no debate about it because this is not um, a situation where RB Leipzig needs to draw and they will be settled and they will be playing calm and they will try to manage the game. It will be a pressing. They will start very, very high. Probably they will start the same way they started against the Bayern. Really driving forward, looking for the points, pressing really united, defence pressing them really high. They will try to look at that as much as they can because, first of all, they don't have the advantage on the head that competition with any of the other two in the group, of course. We mentioned that already, and they don't have the um, they don't have the luxury as well of even um, you know the goal difference. So they lost because they lost five 0 to Leipzig, and that result really um, said their goal difference in the group um, in a bad way. They actually have minus two uh, as far as goal difference is concerned. So that is not going to be something they would like to see. If United can hold themselves and pull through the first half, the first 45 minutes without having any big problems really, it, it, will, be, um, it will be a big issue. Um, team news, a bit of team news here. Um, Edison Gavani, uh, of course, is going to be missing for injury. Anthony Martial as well. Um, Fred is going to be missing for suspension. Um, just a moment here to talk about the, how the attack of United is going to be shaping up now with Martial and Cavani. Um, not starting. This is going to mean that either one, 
it will be, you know, Daniel James, Rashford as a, a false nine of sorts and, and Mason Greenwood, or that will mean Odjanigalo is going to start, and that is going to be even weirder, because what is Odjanigalo going to be doing? Like, this is going to be a game that you need someone, you know, quick to capitalise on the lack of pace in the uh, in the defence of, of Leipzig. And it's not necessarily defence, but also in the midfield sometimes. Um, they lack a little bit of, you know, um, of, of, of a quick rebound effect kind of thing. So starting with Igalo may not work in. So I, I assume he would start with Marcus Rashford as a, as a false nine and, you know, Daniel James, and they will be drifting and interchanging in front of Bruno Fernandes, who's going to be having, of course, his proper camp position. Should he start with Pogba? Should only Gunnar Solskjaer start with Pogba, really? The options are really limited. You have, what, McTominay and Matic, McTominay and, and, and Pogba, McTominay um, and Van der Beek. Maybe Van der Beek will start. He should start, really. He's been, not a flop, but he's been a disappointment so far, as far as starting and taking game time. Um, questions over De Gea and Luke Shaw as well. You don't know how that problem is going to be. I mean... Alex Tejas is doing good at the moment, so I'm assuming the guy will definitely start ahead of uh, ahead of, uh, of anyone against Leipzig. For the Rotten Bullen, uh, they miss, of course, uh, Limus, Mardzic, uh, Upa Meccano for the suspension, of course, Lucas Klosterman, um, and a host of other long-term injuries, of course. Um, again, this is all about the midfield. This is all about winning the battle in the midfield um, for RB Leipzig. They would need, of course, um, to control the game. They need. They probably need an early goal, maybe. Who knows? Um, we'll wait and see how the game is going to shape up. In my opinion, I can see United, you know, grinding out a draw and qualifying, really, or even surprising Leipzig and winning in Germany. But the reality of the game is... United should hold themselves through. They haven't been consistent. You don't know what is going to pop out from Manchester United in terms of that performance. So we'll have to wait and see how United are going to play the game. Hopefully we see an entertaining game. We'll see a very open um, game, of course. Um, that won't help the, the teams and their fans, but hopefully uh, will help us as viewers. Um, so reminder of the standings. Of the group before this game, Manchester United 9 points, top of the group, Paris Saint Germain 9 points, Arby Leipzig 9 points, Istanbul Bashakshah here 3 points. Uh, briefly, PSG versus Bashakshah here, easy game on paper, but certainly, um, you know, um, a game that probably Istanbul Bashakshah here going to be playing with the mentality of we don't have anything to lose, so we're going to be playing our best football against PSG. Who knows what could come out of that, really? Um, anyway. Um, elsewhere, on Tuesday as well, Zenit St. Petersburg faces Borussia Dortmund, Lazio faces Club Brugge, that's the early kickoffs uh, from Group F. Uh, Barcelona faces Juventus, of course, uh, host Juventus, big game again, marketed as the Cristiano Ronaldo versus Lionel Messi last time. I don't know what they're marketing it in as that, but it is, to be fair, maybe. Um... Ren hosts Sevilla, Chelsea hosts Krasno Dahl, Dynamo Kiev hosts Ferenc Varos, and Paris Saint-Germain hosts Pesach here, as we mentioned. Uh, moving on from, uh, of course, this is, if this is the big game on Tuesday, and probably the only big game and the biggest game on Tuesday, then on Wednesday you have probably a host of games that are really um, deciding for the qualification, really. Um, not least of which... The early kickoffs that are going to be played, which are of course Ajax Atalanta, and um, um, in group um, in group E uh, and group D, of course, uh, Ajax Atalanta. Atalanta, I think, missed a big chance on themselves to um, to seal the deal, really, to qualify for this uh, for the next round. They could have easily had uh, ten points heading into this fixtures uh, ending in this fixture. And not thinking too much really about qualification, but now they get it all to play with, uh, play on against Ajax Amsterdam in Amsterdam, uh, in a game that Ajax will need to go through and they will need to win. Draw is not going to do them well, of course. We all know that they need to win. That's why. Uh, Midland Liverpool play in the same kickoff time as well in Group A. 
uh, also Bayern Munich host Lokomotiv Moscow in a formality kind of game really where I expect Hansi Flick to rest the players once again um, the likes of Lewandowski you know uh, now with Martinez added to the injury list your options are even more limited so who are you going to play um, uh, and in the other game of that group in fact there's still a lot to play for between Salzburg and Atletico um, Madrid uh, Atletico Madrid takes points in second place, Salzburg four points in third, and Atletico Madrid made it hard for themselves, really, uh, last time out against Bayern Munich, against a seaside Bayern Munich, really, with some of the uh, youngsters who are in. Um, this game is probably going to be very tense for Diego Simeone, knowing in the back of his head that there's a Madrid derby waiting in the wings, of course, on on, uh, on Sunday. So he will need to manage his moral balance, manage his psychological balance, try to look for um, for a better um, sort of plan now to you know to get the best result he he needs of course um if he's going to come and play for a draw you know that Salzburg are going to be playing for they're going to be attacking they're going to be trying to you know try to get through this um this atletico defense now with this hybrid system of 3 4/5 in the back um uh, at times um so yeah this is a very interesting game as well but none and i mean none is interesting um, more than Group B as a whole, of course. Let's mention Group C quickly before we revert and focus on Group B. Olympiacos hosts Porto in a game where Olympiacos are going to be hoping to get something that qualifies them to the Europa League. Um, as for Marseille, they travel to face Manchester City in, of course, the bye-bye game for both of these sides, Marseille and Olympiacos, before the Europa League and heading out all together of the competition. Um, now we refer back to Group B, the most open group of this competition. Literally, all the four teams can go out, all the four teams can go to the Europa League, all the four teams can qualify first, all the four teams can qualify second. It's 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 all to play for in Group B, really. Um, and don't try asking yourself which is the bigger game, really, um, because. Both games are really big in, in, in different aspects. Um, the Inter vs Shakhtar Donetsk game and the Real Madrid vs Borussia Mönchengladbach game are so similar yet so different. Um, for Real Madrid, I think it's about saving the job further down because if they go out of the Champions League, by any means, um, I mean by any means if they go out of the Champions League, this is going to be the end probably for Zidane's stint at Real Madrid because nobody's going to take the fact that Madrid are going to be leaving the Champions League from as early of a stage as the group stage. Um, for Borussia Mönchengladbach, in my opinion, they missed the big chance against Inter. They should have won against Inter. I think they were the better side. They attacked a little bit more, but their defence was fallible in the absence of Nico Alvedi, who returns, by the way, of course, to this game against Real Madrid, which is a crucial return as much as it is Ramos's return. To Real Madrid, very crucial. They're still missing though, uh, Federico Valverde and uh, Aiden Hazard. Um, Rami Ben Sabini still missing. Uh, Jonas Hoffman is going to be missing for um, for, for Borussia Mönchengladbach. You don't know uh, if Martin Odegaard is going to be playing. Um, he, he's not 100% fit. So um, it is a, a game about Real Madrid. It is a game all about if Real Madrid can hold themselves and can avoid a disastrous defensive performance, really. Um, Borussia Mönchengladbach should have won also against them in Germany. That is, that, is, that is a real opinion for me. They should have won against them in Germany. They should have defeated them um, um, in, in Germany when they had the chance to and they were leading 2-0. And they should have scored a third and probably the fourth goal as well. But they, but they missed their opportunities and Real Madrid, you know, took advantage of some chances they had later on and won, um, the, and, and, you know, won the point. Not the game, but won a point. Um, Inter versus Shakhtar Donetsk. The game is really big for other considerations because Inter, you know, do not have the luxury of head-to-head -head competitions against um, Real Madrid. So a win and Real Madrid drawing will not help. So they will need Real Madrid to lose in order to qualify. Uh, any other result would see them out of the competition. Obviously, Shakhtar Donetsk with seven points. 
if they draw, if they pull out a heroic performance and they draw against Inter, they would probably, um, you know, be one of the most luckiest side of the competition, considering that for, like, three games in a row they couldn't score and they couldn't do anything of notes, 10-0 against, um, against Bruce and Schengladbach as an aggregate scoreline losing. In fact, their goal difference is minus seven. Like, they have a minus seven goal difference, yet they are in second place over Real Madrid, but thanks to head-to-head -head competition, which it shows you that Real Madrid have been inconsistent this season. It shows you that Real Madrid's um, level this season have dropped to such a degree that everybody sees Shakhtar Donetsk and Borussia Mönchengladbach somehow as favourites, and the games are in their hands, in the hands of Shakhtar Donetsk and Borussia Mönchengladbach, of course, heading um, into this fixture. Um, in the end, what I would say, really, Real Madrid should focus on defending. If they want to win, um, they should focus on defending, probably should pull off a performance similar to the one they did against Sevilla. Um, they, they will have to also put themselves in a, a little bit of a, of a mood, you know, boost their morale a little bit with the return of Ramos. Maybe it will make the defense better, we, we don't know. Really, we cannot make sure. Uh, maybe they will not play good. Um, we expect Real Madrid to start strong, really. We expect them to start um, really on the attacking side. We expect them to press Borussia Mönchengladbach, try to look for an early advantage in the game, because if they don't, as long as the game prog progresses and the score is nil-nil, Borussia Mönchengladbach is certainly going to take confidence and they're going to start going forward, even if, if Real Madrid take the lead, really. They've never been secure with the lead, so we might not know how the game is going to shape out to be. For Inter, it's all about winning. Simply win, and you go through. Um, don't wait the results um, from elsewhere. Just win, and you go through. But any else, but any result else um, in that match, a draw or a loss, of course, is going to see them out of the competition. In a group where this, the 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 um, prejudice. The, pre the the bias, the um, the the judgment, the early judgments thrown out of the window straight away. Um, before inside, just do two rounds of this group. You know, all the sort of judgments were thrown out of the window. Looking at the table, looking at the fact that Real Madrid have the real possibility of playing in the Europa League. It's not just a troll at this moment. It's a real possibility, and. Real Madrid are going to be saving themselves from a huge catastrophe if they manage to get through against Borussia Mönchengladbach uh, in that game. Um, obviously, um, Borussia Mönchengladbach with um, 8 points at the top, Shakhtar Donetsk 7, Real Madrid 7, and in the final, that's how open that group is. Again, in Group A, still the same for Salzburg and Atletico Madrid, who have a very intense game uh, in, in Salzburg. Um, Group C, Manchester City, settling the deal already, uh, looking for a moral boost in victory again against Olympique de Marseille, and of course to begin from Group D, Atalanta uh, travelling to Amsterdam to face Ajax uh, in order to get maybe a point that will see them qualify alongside Liverpool. Uh, that was all for the Champions League preview, um, I do remind you to like, share, comment on this video, what do you think is going to happen really. Um, um, subscribe to the channel, of course, and label notification to receive more episodes of the podcast, hopefully. Listen to Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, or any other podcast platform. Follow us on social media, at Pitch Sideboard on Instagram, PSP on Twitter. Until I meet you tomorrow, of course, to talk about Tuesday's games. I was your boy, the HOD from the PSP. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.